Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Amazing Physics. I'm thrilled to have you here for another exciting video. In our previous video, we delved into the fascinating world of computer architecture, specifically exploring the disparities between RISC and CISC architectures. Today, we'll take a deeper dive into these concepts and explore RISC and CISC instruction sets, using examples to illustrate their unique characteristics. Additionally, we'll touch upon addressing modes and the revolutionary concept of pipelining in these architectures. Are you all excited? I know I am. So, without further ado, let's embark on this enlightening journey. Alright, let's begin with a quick recap. RISC, or Reduced Instruction Set Computing, and CIS, or Complex Instruction Set Computing, are two contrasting approaches to designing computer processors. RISC architectures focus on simplicity and efficiency by employing a limited set of simple instructions. On the other hand, CISC architectures emphasize versatility by incorporating a wide range of complex instructions. In case you missed our previous video on the differences between RISC and CISC architecture, you can find the link on the screen. Make sure to check it out to get up to speed. Today, we'll take our understanding a step further and explore the intricacies of their instruction sets. To make things more relatable, we'll use examples to illustrate how these instructions are executed. Let's start with RISC instruction sets. RISC instructions are designed to be simple and have a fixed size, usually one memory word. Unlike other instruction sets, RISC instructions primarily operate on processor registers. Arithmetic and logic operations in RISC instructions can have operands stored in registers or provided directly within the instruction. Let's look at a couple of examples. In the first instruction, at R2, R3, the operands are stored in registers R2 and R3. Similarly, in the second instruction, add R2, R3, R4, the operands are in registers R2, R3, and R4. However, when a program starts executing, the operands are typically stored in memory. To access these memory operands, RISC instruction sets provide load and store instructions. The load instruction loads an operand from memory into a processor register. It has the following format, load, destination, source. For instance, consider the instruction load R2, A. This instruction will load the operand from memory location A into register R2. On the other hand, the store instruction is used to store data back to memory. It is of the form, store, source, destination. Let's take an example, store R2, A. In this case, the content of register R2 will be stored into memory location A. You may have noticed that the operand side of both instructions looks the same, with R2, A, appearing in both cases. However, there's a crucial difference in the order of the source and destination. The store instruction reverses the order seen in the load instruction. Now let's take a closer look at each addressing mode employed in RISC architectures. The first addressing mode is immediate addressing. It explicitly specifies the operand in the instruction itself, such as in the instruction add R4, R2, number 200. Add R4, R2, number 200 adds 200 to the content of R2 and stores the result in R4. The second addressing mode is register addressing. It describes the registers holding the operands. Consider the instruction add R3, R3, R4. It adds the content of R4 to the content of R3 and stores the result in R3. Next, we have absolute addressing. This mode uses a name to represent a memory location, typically used for declaring global variables in a program. For instance, the instruction integer A, B, sum allocates memory for variables A, B, and sum. Register indirect addressing is another mode, similar to pointers in high-level languages. Let's take the instruction load R2, R3. Here, R2 will be loaded with the content at the memory location specified by R3. Lastly, we have index addressing, which employs a register and a constant to calculate the address of the operand, similar to arrays in high-level languages. Consider the instruction load R2 for R3. R2 will be loaded with the content at the location obtained by adding 4 to the content of R3. Now that we understand RISC instruction sets, let's explore the concept of pipelining. Pipelining allows for the efficient execution of instructions by overlapping different stages of instruction processing. Pipelining is a technique used to improve the performance of a processor by overlapping the execution of multiple instructions. The instruction is divided into five subtasks, each of which is executed in a separate stage of the pipeline. 
This allows the processor to start executing the next instruction before the current instruction has finished, which can significantly improve the throughput of the processor. Now let's look at the five stages of instruction pipelining. Instruction fetch. This stage fetches the next instruction from memory. Instruction decode. This stage decodes the instruction and determines what it needs to do. Operand fetch. This stage fetches the operands that the instruction needs from memory. Instruction execution. This stage executes the instruction. Operand store. This stage stores the results of the instruction back in memory. Now, let's consider a scenario where we have five instructions to execute. The first instruction enters the pipeline and begins its execution. It takes five clock cycles to complete all stages of the pipeline. Once the first instruction completes its execution, something interesting happens. In the next clock cycle, the second instruction starts its instruction fetch stage while the first instruction moves to the instruction decode stage. This overlapping of instructions allows the hardware to remain busy and perform operations continuously. However, it's important to note that no two instructions can execute the same stage at the same clock cycle. Each stage must complete its operation before the next stage can begin for a different instruction. As the clock cycles progress, each instruction moves through the pipeline, with new instructions entering and completed instructions exiting. This pipelining technique significantly improves the overall throughput and efficiency of the processor. Now let's learn how the concept of pipelining is used in RISC architecture. In RISC architecture, instructions typically go through two stages for arithmetic and logical operations. The first stage is the instruction fetch stage, where the instruction is fetched from memory. The second stage is the instruction execute stage, where the ALU performs the operation using the registers. However, for load and store instructions involving memory accesses, an additional stage called memory store is introduced. Let's consider an example instruction. We can create a risk instruction set for this computation. The instruction set would include load instructions for fetching the values of B and C into registers an add instruction to perform the addition using the registers, and a store instruction to store the result back into memory. By utilizing pipelining, we can overlap the execution of multiple instructions, resulting in faster execution. However, in cases where the memory is single-ported, the execution stage of the second instruction may experience a stall, waiting for the completion of the memory stage of the first instruction. To overcome this, no operation instructions can be inserted into the instruction stream. This equalizes the duration of all stages and improves execution speed. In scenarios where the execution stage itself is longer, such as with ALU operations, the instruction execute stage can be divided into two parts, i.e. one for register reading and i.e. two for ALU operation. In summary, RISC instruction sets offer simplicity, fixed size, and register-based operations. Load and store instructions enable access to memory operands. Pipelining and RISC architectures enhances execution speed by overlapping instruction stages. Understanding RISC instruction sets and pipelining is crucial for designing efficient processors and optimizing program execution. Moving on to CISC processors. In a CISC processor, instructions are complex in nature and occupy more than a single word in memory. Unlike RISC processors, which commonly use load and store instructions to access memory operands. CISC processors employ a versatile instruction called move to access memory operands. The move instruction in CISC processors has a wider scope and can directly access memory operands. Its general format is move destination source. This instruction allows you to move an immediate operand to a memory location or a register. Let's take a look at some examples. You can move an immediate value such as 100, to a memory location or a register using the move instruction. For instance, move A, 100. This instruction moves the immediate value 100 to the memory location A. Similarly, move R, 100. This instruction moves the immediate value 100 to the register specified by R. The register can be any general-purpose register available in the architecture you are using. Example R1, R2, etc. Additionally, the move instruction enables you to transfer operands between memory locations or registers. For example, move A, B transfers the operand from memory location B to A, while move R1, R2 transfers the operand from register R2 to R1. Now let's take a closer look at each addressing mode employed in CISC architectures. CISC instruction sets include the five basic addressing modes, immediate mode, direct, absolute mode, register mode, indirect mode, and index mode. 
These addressing modes provide flexibility in accessing operands. In addition to the basic addressing modes, CISC processors offer some additional addressing modes. These include auto-increment mode, where the effective address of an operand is the content of a register that is automatically incremented to point to the next operand. Let's say we have a register called R1 that contains the address of the first element in an array. We can use the auto-increment addressing mode to access the next element in the array by simply using the R1 register as the operand. The instruction will automatically increment the value of R1 after it is executed, so the next time we use R1 as an operand, it will point to the next element in the array. Auto decrement mode, which decrements the content of a register to obtain the effective address. The auto decrement mode works in a similar way, except that the value of the register is decremented after the instruction is executed. This can be useful for implementing a stack, where the top of the stack is always stored in a register. Relative mode where the effective address is obtained by adding a constant to the content of the program counter. This mode allows for referencing a large range of memory. The relative addressing mode is used to access a memory location that is a constant offset from the current instruction pointer. This can be useful for accessing variables that are stored in a linked list, where the address of each node is stored in the previous node. Now, let's discuss how CISC processors minimize the length of code. Compared to RISC processors, CISC architectures can execute multiple low-level instructions in a single high-level instruction, reducing the number of instructions required for a particular operation. For example, let's say we want to write a program that adds two numbers and stores the result in a variable. In RISC, we would need to use two instructions to do this, one instruction to add the numbers, and another instruction to store the result in the variable. However, in CISC, we could use a single instruction that can perform both operations. The following code shows how this could be done in RISC and CISC. As you can see, the CISC code is shorter than the RISC code. This is because the CISC instruction add can perform both addition and assignment, while the RISC instructions move and add can only perform one operation each. Of course, there are some cases where RISC code can be shorter than CISC code. For example, if we only need to perform a single operation, then RISC code will be shorter because it only needs one instruction. However, in general, CISC code can be shorter than RISC code because it can perform multiple operations in a single instruction. By executing several low-level instructions within a single high-level instruction, CISC architecture effectively minimizes the number of instructions in a program, resulting in shorter code. Now, let's talk about pipelining in CISC processors. Pipelining is a technique used to improve the performance of processors by allowing multiple instructions to be processed simultaneously in different stages of the pipeline. RISC-style instructions are well-suited for pipelining because they are of fixed length and have operands in the same position within the instruction word. However, CISC-style instructions present challenges for pipelining due to their variable length, multiple operands, complex addressing modes, and complex instructions. Let's consider the following example. In the first move instruction, both operands have memory locations as their effective addresses, requiring two memory accesses. In the second move instruction, the effective address of the first operand is a memory location, while the effective address of the second operand is a register. This instruction needs only one memory access. To ensure proper execution, the second move instruction needs to be stalled until the first move instruction completes accessing both operands from memory. Hence, implementing pipelining to CISC-style instructions is quite complicated. In conclusion, CISC processors offer complex instruction sets with a wider scope, allowing for direct access to memory operands. They minimize the length of code by executing multiple low-level instructions in a single high-level instruction. However, implementing pipelining in CISC processors can be challenging due to their variable length instructions, multiple operands, and complex addressing modes. That's it for today's video on CISC and RISC instruction sets and pipelining in computer architecture. I hope you found it informative and gained a better understanding of the topic. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more educational content. Until next time, happy computing. Thank you.